Hi, Oz from the LakeFS team, back with another pro tip. Did you know that LakeFS not only has its own API, but also supports the AWS S3 API? This is cool because it allows a lot of applications that already know how to communicate with S3 to use LakeFS as a drop-in replacement, but enjoy all the benefits of versioning, committing, merging, without actually having to change the code in any significant way or add a client library. Let's see this in action with the AWS CLI. So here I've already followed the quick start tutorial from the LakeFS docs, link to that below, and I've created a quick start repository on my LakeFS installation. This has a, some sample data and a single branch called main. Let's see how we can use that from the AWS CLI. So the first thing I have to do is I have to set a few environment variables that basically tell the AWS CLI uh, to use our LakeFS instance instead. So I'm setting the endpoint URL to be my LakeFS installation and my access key in secret to be my LakeFS credentials. So once I've configured those, I can do AWS S3 LS. And instead of getting a list of buckets in my AWS accounts, I'm seeing repositories on my local LakeFS installation. That's pretty cool. So if I look what's inside my quick start bucket, or in our case, uh, repository, I see that I have a single branch called main. Let's create a new one and see how that looks like. So I'll go to branches, create branch, and call it dev. As you can see, they're pointing to the same commit, so we didn't actually have to copy any of the data. And if I explore this again from the AWS CLI, it automatically appears as a prefix within that bucket. So now let's try and do something useful. Let's use the AWS S3 sync command to copy some data from my local machine and synchronize that into my LakeFS repository and branch. So I'll do AWS S3 sync path to my local directory. In my case, it's called training data. And I'm going to put it on the quick start repository under the dev branch. We want that isolation. Let's put it on a prefix called datasets. So everything was copied over. And now if I go back to my LakeFS, and I explore the dev branch, it now has this datasets folder that didn't exist before. Within that, I have my training data, which in my case is a bunch of pictures of alpacas because they're great. So if I look on my main branch, obviously I didn't change that one, so I don't see a datasets folder there. And I can also verify that from my uncommitted changes. So nothing on main, and here's our folder appearing on dev. I can even get a summary of the changes, and these are the objects that I've added. That's pretty cool. So just like we've done that with the AWS CLI, we can do it for any other tool that knows how to use AWS S3. That's pretty powerful. So until the next pro tip, my name is Oz, and thank you for tuning in. Bye-bye.